Chandra and I hope this message blesses you or somebody out there. And today's topic is God does not punish or judge believers. He only corrects them because judgment is for the wicked and punishment is for the corrupt. So when it comes to those that has chosen Jesus Christ as their Lord and their personal saviors, those who believe in him and trust him with all their hearts, all he does is correct them. And his way of correcting his own is called chastening. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews 12, 6, that for whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. So chastening is the greatest evidence of God's love. And correction is the greatest evidence of God's mercy on his children, those he loves. So one may ask themselves, how does he correct me? He corrects you by putting his heavy hand on you. And one might ask also, how do I know if I'm being attacked or it's just a heavy hand from God through correction? So when you want to know if the heavy hand that is on you is from God, is that if it's from the enemy, you wake up feeling drained, you have no uh, energy, you feel so tired, you have no strength, you can't read the Bible, you can't do anything, you feel like you're very weak. If it's a demon or an attack, if you can pray just for a few minutes, or maybe watch you for a few minutes, or praise God for a few minutes, automatically it will go away and you start getting back to yourself. But when the hand, the heavy hand is from God, you can try to worship, it doesn't it, it doesn't gel, you don't feel it, you feel weak, you feel drained. Everything seems like it's not working. You're weak, you can't pray, you can't read your Bible, you can't even worship. That's when you know that the heavy hand is from God. Even David explained it in Psalms 32 4 that for day and night your hand was heavy upon me and my vitality was turned into drought of summer. So God puts this heavy hand on you as a form of correction. So what he does, basically, he wants you to acknowledge what you've done wrong, your wrongdoings. He wants you to acknowledge your sin so you can repent from that sin and you can confess. It's not like he wants you to confess because he doesn't know what you did. He knows that confession can li liberate you. That's why he wants you to acknowledge everything, what you've done wrong, where you went wrong. Because if you don't do that, he will leave that heavy hand on you so that you can know what can potentially destroy you. So you can know where you went wrong. Confession is very important because it liberates you. Even the Bible tells us in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from unrighteousness. And the Bible also tells us in James 5, 16, that therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. And the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. God wants, you, wants your prayers to be powerful and effective. But have you ever noticed, for example, that if you've done something, like maybe you fell into sin, maybe you haven't drunk, drunk alcohol in a long time, and God has told you to stop drinking, as an example, and you drank that day, you feel weak to pray, you feel tired, you feel drained, you can't do anything. It's because you've fallen into sin. God, and when you do that, your prayers cannot be powerful and effective because we all know that sin separates you from God and the wages of sin. But most of the time, if you sit down and you acknowledge that, ah, this is where I went wrong, this is what I did, then it liberates you. You confess your sin and you repent to him, then you start feeling, you get back to yourself. You start feeling yourself again. You start feeling like, oh, I'm back to myself. I'm happy. Uh, I can pray again. I can, 
I, I can read the Bible, I can worship Him in truth and in spirit. And even when you pray, you can feel that presence around you. You can feel the power of the Holy Spirit around you because you've been liberated from what you did. You've been liberated from that sin. And the reason why God do this is because most of the time when you acknowledge your wrongs and you correct what you did wrong, you, you, he usually moves you to another level. He takes you to another level because he doesn't want to promote you while you're still the old self doing the same old thing, no renewal of the mind, of your soul, of your spirit, and everything is still the same. Because if he can take you to another level when you're like that, there's not going to be any difference. You're not, you're not going to know better. Because his main plan is for, for your prayers to be powerful and effective. And he doesn't want you to be like the dry bones that you see in church. People who claim to be Christians, but they don't see their breakthroughs. They don't see their miracles. They keep on saying that, oh, maybe God doesn't love me. Or maybe it will happen some other time because they've become the dry bones they're sinning they don't even they, they their conscience is so dead that even when they're in sin they can't see anything wrong with it because the easiest way to kill the voice of god in your life is to kill your conscience your inner conscience because god speaks to you through your conscience and if you don't want to hear him kill that conscience you won't hear him you will still think that you're working for him. You still think that you have him, but you won't hear anything from him. Because if you can't learn that you've done something wrong and you can't correct yourself, you will think that it's okay and you keep on living in sin. But the Bible, so the Bible tells us in Psalms 37, 28, that for the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. But the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. And he goes to tell us also in Proverbs 10, 7 that the memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. So that shows you that he doesn't only destroy the wicked. His, their names also means nothing in the spiritual realm. And their descendants also will be cut off from him. And the name also won't be remembered. So that's why he can only judge the wicked, those who despise the Holy Spirit, those who talk against the Holy Spirit, those who think that there's no God. Even the Bible said like only a fool thinks that there's no God. Those are the people that God judges, the wicked. First, you need to understand what the word judgment means. To judge means to rule justly. Judgment also means to be just, to settle something. That's why as a child of God, when you see something and you've been called, you think there's a case or the people are fighting or everything, your job is to settle the matter and let, the God, let God do the judgment because it's not your place to judge anybody. Because when he judges the wicked, it's never anything positive. It's an extra hand of punishment on them. So judgment belongs to him. That's why you, you, you hear people, if he ever hears somebody says to you, God will judge you, will punish you, know that they don't understand. Because even the Bible tells us that wisdom is the principal thing. But above all that getting, get understanding. Those who think that God can judge and punish you as a believer, they're mistaken. All he does is correct you. He doesn't just uh, look from heaven to earth and see who he can punish or judge. He only does that to the wicked. His own, he protects his own. He protects them and he cares for his own. And he loves his own with all his heart. He's not only seeking to punish the wicked, though he's only seeking to punish the wicked, those who have not received Christ, those who despise him. That's who the Lord himself is, our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, those who have received Jesus Christ cannot be punished because Jesus 
was punished on our behalf. Think about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. He was crucified in the center of thieves and murderers in the midst of them. He was stripped naked. He was exposed for our sins, for his business to be sent by the world. He punished him on our behalf. He was shamed and his death was shameful and there was embarrassment that was done for him. They shamed him so that you and I will never be shamed. Jesus was exposed so nobody else can be exposed. That's why his death means so much to us. Because what he went through, nobody can go through that and leave. It was shameful. They made sure that they put him in the center, in the midst of thieves and murderers. And they had the audacity to put on his forehead the king of Jews as an insult to the kingdom of God. And because he was shamed and he was punished for us, God cannot punish you. Me and you cannot be punished. The only thing he can do, he can correct us. That's why the Bible tells us in Romans 8, 1 to 3, that therefore there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Like I said earlier, sin separates us from God. The wages of sin is death. But it doesn't mean that because the Bible said there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ, that gives you a license to sin. No, it doesn't. Because the one that sin is not a born again. That's how it is. You can't say you are born again and you sin. And you can't say you are saved because, and you sin. Because the one that is saved hates sin. Because you have to understand that sin separates you from God. And whenever you speak against the Holy Spirit, you condemn things of God, you are wicked. And the wicked always get judged. And the corrupt gets punished. God is not going to judge those he loves. He protects his own. He preserves his own. He's always, he's always looking after his own. Because judgment is for the wicked. And punishment is for the corrupt. And there's a big difference. God is more than what people think. God is more what people think they might. God is more than what people even think they know. And there's a big difference of those who choose him as their Lord and personal Savior. Because all he does to his own, he corrects so that they can learn from their wrongs and they don't go back to what could potentially destroy them and pull them away from his will. The Bible tells us in Revelation 3.19 that as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, but be zealous therefore and repent. So as a child of God, know that he can never judge you. He can never punish you. He can only correct you by chastening you, by putting that heavy hand on you so that you can know your wrongs you can acknowledge that i was wrong and correct yourself so that you don't fall more into sin and be pulled away from his will you can know that if i continue in sin it will kill my conscience and my conscience is my number way of speaking 
with God and hear God. Even some of the people in the world, they, they, they know that their conscience is always right. Because God speaks to all of us. You can hear people say that my gut feeling told me not to do it. And they know all the time that if they follow that gut feeling, it's all, they're always right. And if you kill that conscience and you live in sin, it will separate you from him. Then you become the wicked. You start despising him. You start becoming those fools that says, there's no God. Then he can judge you. That's when he can punish you. That's when it's no longer corruption, which is chastening corruption. It's judgment. And the wages of sin is death. So I hope you've been blessed by this message. And if you have, please like and share and subscribe to my channel. And thank you, thank you so much for watching. God bless you.